Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. We're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing on the PC. Friday night from Texas. Night of the Heavyweights. We welcome you to Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Our bouts here on the channel. Roy Harris versus Cleveland Williams. George Foreman versus Ozzy Acasio. Jack Johnson takes on Buddy Bear. Randall Tex Cobb versus Dwayne Bobbick. And we start off this evening of heavyweights from Sam Houston Coliseum with Ed Too Tall Jones, the former Dallas Cowboy, taking on George Scrap Iron Johnson. 10 rounds, all bouts, 10 rounds, heavyweights. Ed Tutal Jones in our Legends of Boxing universe is 1-3 with one stoppage victory. Scrap Iron George Johnson out of Oklahoma City makes his first appearance in our universe. In reality, Ed Tutal Jones was 6-0 with 5 KOs before he went back to play football for the Cowboys. George Scrap Iron Johnson, a trial horse, as you would say in boxing, 22-27-5 with 11 stoppages. Has a pretty good chin, though. Let's see what Ed Tutal Jones can do against Scrap Iron Johnson. Johnson actually might be a slight favorite here. To the ring we go. Ed Tutal Jones will fight out of the red corner. George Scrap Iron Johnson, the blue corner. They get their final instructions from the referee. Back to the corner as they go, we wait for the bell. Jones likes to land the jab in the right hand. Scrap Iron will have the advantage with control factor. He likes to get on the inside a bit. Fights from the outside. Tough competitor. Here's the bell for round number one. Both fighters faint but don't fire. There's a big height discrepancy here between Ed Tutal Jones and Scrap Iron Johnson. Johnson Trying to feint, Jones moves forward, and Johnson lands a quick one-two. A jab to the chest of Ed Tutal Jones, and then a right hand to the body. Both fighters circling one another. Jones lands two jabs, keeping Johnson at bay. Again, these pugilists circle. Johnson gets in punching range, digs the body of Ed Tutal Jones. Johnson continues to look to punch. Two more jabs. Johnson doing a nice job circling and landing his jab. Under a minute to go. No action there. Johnson looks to load up. He feinted the jab and landed a good right hook to the body of Ed Tutal Jones, digging it hard into his rib cage. They fall into a clinch and the referee breaks them. Good round by George Scrap Iron Johnson. Round two scheduled for ten. Again, both fighters fainting but not firing. Ed Tutal Jones looks to land that jab, but Scrap Iron Johnson is able to parry those punches away. They tie up. Referee breaks them. Johnson, both men on... Oh, Johnson on the outside. Jones pressing the attack a bit. Johnson looks to catch Ed Tutal Jones coming in, and he does... Quick four-punch combination, grazing shots, but two out of four got through. Johnson looks to punch again, lands a couple of nice jabs. Jones pressing the attack. Johnson ties him up, referee breaks them. Johnson not allowing Ed Tutal Jones to fight on the inside. Jones bores in. Jones looks to punch. He throws wildly and misses those shots. Johnson doing an excellent job so far in this bout. Jones tries to force Johnson back. Johnson ties him up. Referee breaks him. 20 seconds to go here in round two. Ed Tutal Jones landed on the belt line. He gets a slight warning there from the referee. 
I give those first two rounds to George Scrapiron Johnson. The ringside score has it one Johnson, one even. Round three, scheduled for ten. Both fighters just fainting but not firing. Oh! Ed Tutal Jones bringing the pressure goes to the Franks and Beans. He is admonished by the referee. Referee Dave Gardner looks at George Scrapiron Johnson. Johnson says he's A OK. Bout continues. Johnson on the outside. Jones, pretty reckless, coming forward. And Johnson clips him with an overhand right and a left hook. Good combination by Scrap Iron Johnson. He looks to follow up. He feints the jab and digs the right to the body. Scrap Iron Johnson, a nice four-punch salvo. They're scoring blows, but not very hard. Johnson controlling the pace of this bout. Again, he feints Jones out of position. Jones is applying pressure, but he is not landing. Johnson digs to the ribs. A minute to go, and it's all Scrap Iron Johnson. Johnson with the overhand right, clipping the jaw of Ed Tutal Jones and digs the left into the ribs. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. First punches that Ed Tutal Jones has landed. We have about 18 seconds to go. A very impressive round for the trial horse, George Scrap Iron Johnson from Oklahoma City. Ed Tutal Jones... Throws the jab, misses, but lands a grazing right hand to the top of Johnson's head. We've given all three rounds to George Scrap Iron Johnson. Joining us at ringside here at the Houston Coliseum, the Sam Houston Coliseum, SGJ Jamie. Says Scrap Iron, he has been as sneaky, he's been sneaky good in my universe. Excellent. Captain Carl Eight has joined us. He says, Hi, Al. Hope everyone's doing well. Another great-looking card for Fight Night. This should be a fun one. Better than the crap I watched on The Zone. I didn't even finish watching the main event. Garcia should win a horrible fight card. Those announcers can't tell the truth. They're like, oh, it's a good fight. No, it's not a good fight card. It stinks. Here we go. Round number four. The Bell. Scrap Iron Johnson digs a couple of hooks to the body. Jones keeps his arms in tight. Jones trying to apply the pressure. Johnson is picking Ed Too Tall Jones apart. Jones winds up, missed the left, the right, but then came with a grazing left uppercut. That catches Scrap Iron Johnson. Jones has to really follow up. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both fighters land. This has been the best round so far for the pressing Ed Too Tall Jones. Jones looking to land again. Nice combination, but Johnson stays low. They're scoring blows, but he's not been able to hurt Scrap Iron Johnson. Jones putting together a good rally here. Winging punches. Johnson dips, comes up, and nails him with a left right to the body. Jones shoves him away. Scrap Iron Johnson faints. Jones moves forward, and he is caught with a jab. The right hand missed. Under a minute to go here in round number four. Scrap Iron Johnson. Beautiful two jabs and a right hand. Clipping the jaw of Ed Too Tall Jones. Again, this has been the best round for Jones, but he is not winning it. Scrap Iron Johnson trying to send Jones back to the Dallas Cowboys. Beautiful lead cross uh, by Scrap Iron Johnson. It was a looping punch 15 seconds ago. Ed Too Tall Jones lands a furious combination at the bell. However, we give another round in the bank to George Scrap Iron Johnson. Coming up on round five, round five scheduled for 10. Ed Tutal Jones is fatigued. Scrap Iron Johnson looks very fresh in his corner. Here's the bell. Does he take out Ed Tutal Jones? We'll find out. They tie up. Referee Gardner says fight out of it. But Ed Too Tall Jones just is very tired. Referee breaks them. Scrap Iron Johnson looking to catch and rat it tat Too Tall Jones coming in, and he does. He feints the jab, lands the right hand. It is a looping right hand that grazes the jaw of Ed Too Tall Jones. Those shots were missed by Scrap Iron Johnson. Jones pushes Johnson off balance. Jones looks to follow up, and Jones land. That was the best combination he has thrown all night. A good right hand and a left hook to the jaw of Scrap Iron Johnson. Johnson stood up to it. Johnson comes back with a couple of hooks to the body. Jones kept his elbows in tight. Johnson follows up. 
Another couple of hooks to the body. They're screaming from the too tall Jones corner to throw punches in bunches. Toe to toe exchange, even exchange. 24 seconds to go here in round five. Scrap Iron Johnson. Beautiful combination. Left right to the body, left right to the head. Stops the slow press of Ed Too Tall Jones. Seconds to go. Jones loads up and he lands a left and then the right. Jones extremely tired as he goes back and plops down on the stool. Scrap. That was the best round for Ed Tuttle Jones, but I still have not given the former Dallas Cowboy the benefit of the doubt in any of the first five rounds. Let's go to the ringside score. 4 0 1 for Scrap Iron Johnson. Ringside score gave round two even. Joining us at ringside here at the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. David Selinski. He says, hello, everyone. Good-looking card out. Thank you very much. Also here, Captain Carl 8 and SGJ Jamie. Round number six coming up. Jones is really exhausted. His boxing excursion could be coming to an end in our universe. Round six, scheduled for ten. Scrap Iron Johnson, the trial horse from Oklahoma City doing... Quite a good job. There's the bell. Both fighters faint but don't fire. Scrap Iron Johnson looks to nail a, a really stationary Ed Tuttle Jones, and he hits him with two quick jabs. Jones has nothing to answer. Scrap Iron Johnson now feeling his oats, moving in and out, rat-a-tatting the rib cage of Ed Tuttle Jones. Ed Tuttle Jones. Lands a jab and a right uppercut, snapping the head of Johnson, but he is exhausted. Johnson bips and bops and strikes Jones over and over again. Those are scoring blows, if not hard. They're scoring punches. Both fighters faint but don't fire. Under a minute to go here in round number six. Scrap Iron Johnson. Oh, a huge cross. A huge cross crushes the jaw of Ed Tuttle Jones. Jones backing up. Johnson pursues. Johnson looking to load up. Jab and a right hand. Jones absorbs it. Slides away from the ropes. Johnson. Oh! Johnson went to rip the body. Ed Tuttle Jones was pushing his head down. And he went low there. Referee Dave Gardner admonishes Scrap Iron Johnson. Joining us. Not only is he the referee, but he is in the chat at the moment. Referee Dave Gardner. SGJ Jamie shares a story about Scrap Iron Johnson, who actually was a tough fighter. Johnson got married after his fight with Sonny Liston. He blamed Liston that he hit him so hard he married the wrong woman. <laughs> we move on to round seven. We have Scrap Iron Johnson. He might win his debut here. We have him way ahead. So does the ringside scorer. An exhausted Ed Tuttle Jones looking to bang... Lands a hook to the body, but missed the right hand to the head. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. They have told Too Tall Jones, you got a knockout, Scrap Iron. That's a tough thing. Scrap Iron Johnson catches Jones moving forward with a right hand to the jaw, left hook to the ribs. Johnson continues to punch. Wings hooks to the head. Parried away by Ed Too Tall Jones. Johnson continues to fire. Jab in a right hand snaps the head of Jones. Jones blinking, yes, a minor swelling near the left eye. A minute 18 to go here in round seven. Scrap Iron Johnson looking to load up. Jones smothers those punches. Nothing landed clean there. Ed Too Tall Jones. A right hand, left hook, and another right hand. Good crisp combination by Ed Too Tall Jones. Exhausted or not, he is trying his best. Scrap Iron Johnson comes right back. Two jabs. To the jaw of Ed Too Tall Jones. Again, Jones stops the attack. It is a slow lumbering attack. And the trial horse, George Scrap Iron Johnson, is picking him apart. 14 seconds to go. And there's the bell as both fighters circle one another. Coming up on round eight. In George Scrap Iron Johnson's corner, they're telling him just stay on your feet. They can't screw you out of this one. Or can they? Round 8 scheduled for 10. The bell. And it's Scrap Iron Johnson doing what he's done best in this fight. Rat-a-tatting the ribcage of the taller, larger Ed Tuttle Jones. Four shots 
into the side of the ribs, left side and right side of Ed Tutal Jones. Jones shoves Scrap Iron Johnson off balance, and Jones lands a chopping right hand in a left uppercut, drawing blood from the nose of Scrap Iron Johnson. That is a good combination by Ed Tutal Jones. Can he follow up? He looks to follow up. And he bangs away. He is throwing wildly, but some of those punches got through. Grazing shots, not a lot of power. Scrap Iron Johnson circles. Now circles back, dips in, and he missed those shots. Ed Tutel Jones doing a lot of pushing and shoving now. The referee, Dave Gardner, is letting him get away with it. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. This is the best round for Tutel Jones. It comes in round eight. Scrap Iron Johnson lands that lead cross. Missed the left to the head, though. Under a minute to go, Scrap Iron lands two jabs as Ed Tutel Jones slowly plods forward. Ed Tutel Jones gets in punching range, and another good combination. He was able to hold Scrap Iron Johnson in place, and he pounded away with the right hand. Good job by Ed Tutel Jones. Seconds remaining in round number eight. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange favoring Scrap Iron Johnson, and now... Jones comes back with a shot. Both men weeble wobble as they go back to their corners. We, you know what? We're going to give that round to Ed Tutal Jones. Let's see how the ringside scorer has it. Gave it even. Six more minutes to go. Jones is exhausted. Referee Dave Gardner walks over to the corner, asks Ed Tutal Jones in his entourage in his corner do you want to continue he says yes scrap iron looks pretty fresh in his corner they're telling him use the jab bang the body keep the angles on ed too tall jones don't let him use his larger girth on you jones again a lot of pushing and shoving now round nine scheduled for 10 scrap iron johnson quickly comes out lands two jabs to the chest of ed too tall jones and that looping right hand clips him on the side of the head. Scrap Iron follows up, jabbing to the chest, and rips a shot to the body. It was a left hook to the body. Scrap Iron Johnson looking to load up. He misses the shots. Ed Tutal Jones pushes him away. Both men from distance. Jones puts the jab out there and lands the right cross on Scrap Iron Johnson. Johnson walks through it. He's smiling. Johnson looks to load up, digs a left to the body, looping right hand. Grazes the chin of Ed Tutal Jones. Jones fires back with a chopping right hand. Tries to follow up with a left uppercut. Johnson smothers him. Now they slide away from one another. Jones puts the jab out there. Two jabs and a right hand. Catching Johnson. Blood from the nose again. And now there's a cut. A small cut. Is it an abrasion? No, we see blood. It is a cut under the left eye of Scrap Iron Johnson. Jones... Trying to follow up, Johnson comes back with a quick one-two combination, snapping, snapping the head of the former Dallas Cowboy. Final seconds here in round nine. Ed Tutal Jones missed the left hook, but land the chopping right hand. That was, in our opinion, an Ed Tutal Jones round. Johnson goes back to his stool. They work on a bloody nose and a, a cut, a, a small cut under the left eye. There's only three more minutes of boxing. Ed Tutal Jones, in our opinion, needs a knockout. Scrap Iron Johnson, finally breathing heavily. But it's far too late. Ringside scorer has it 89-84. And they did give, as we did, round nine to Ed Tutal Jones. Jones' career in our Legends of Boxing universe could be coming to an end. Round 10. They have told Ed Tutal Jones you must knock him out. George Scrap Iron Johnson. Advice from his corner. Move, move, move. Johnson on the outside. Jones pursuing him. Jones loads up. Oh! A huge right hand left uppercut and a right uppercut. And Johnson is hurt. Holy cow. Ed Tutal Jones loading up. Ed Tutal Jones throwing frantically, catches Johnson with a hook. Johnson looks to fire back. He digs to the body. Johnson's legs aren't there. Jones, Jones banging away with hooks. He's throwing everything he has. Johnson trying to move away. Johnson slides back. Johnson lands two jabs. Ed Tutal Jones landing, looking to land another big shot. A jab and a right hand. 
and more blood from the nose of Scrap Iron Johnson. Under a minute to go, Ed Too Tall Jones giving it his all. He bangs away with the body shots and up to the head. Johnson on the ropes. Johnson looks to fight off the ropes. He hooks to the body, brings it up to the head, then a chopping right hand. And there is blood from Ed Too Tall Jones. Fans on their feet here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. Final seconds as Ed Too Tall Jones leans into Johnson. On the ropes, there is the bell. Holy cow. Ed Too Tall Jones, exhausted or not, he landed big shots and had scrap iron nearly out. But scrap iron survives. He's a bloody mess. Jones has a slight cut under the eye, the left eye. It's going to be some interesting scoring. I, I, let's see if Ed Too Tall Jones gets a hometown decision. We have Scrap Iron winning quite convincingly. We gave him 8 out of 10 rounds. We give the last two rounds to Ed Too Tall Jones. The ringside score gives the last two rounds to Ed Too Tall Jones, but also had round 2 and 8 even. So Scrap Iron Johnson on the ringside scorer's card wins 98-94. Now we go to the official result. 99-95 Johnson. 96-96 even. 99-94 Johnson. Scrap Iron Johnson wins a majority decision. The second judge had it 96-96. And I mean, again, if you give those two rounds that were even to Ed Too Tall Jones, and then another round, that's your even fight. We didn't see it that way. We had an 8-2 for Scrap Iron Johnson, but the right man did win, and Ed Too Tall Jones might think about going back to football. So a good first tussle here in Texas. Let's quickly go to the fight report, and let's look at the 96-96 card, which is the judge number two. And you can see Scrap Iron Johnson punching points. That's not necessarily punches landed. It's punching points. 53 to 35. Ed Too Tall Jones came on in the last two rounds, in our opinion. But let's look at the 96-96. Uh, Jones in the 10th. Jones in the 9th. Even in the 8th. Jones in the 7th. Scrap Iron Johnson in the 6th. Jones in the 5th. Johnson in the 4th, 3rd. Even in the second. And Scrap Iron Johnson in the first. Yep, so that's what happened. A couple of those sort of close, ugly rounds. They went with Ed Tuttle Jones. But Scrap Iron Johnson wins a majority decision. Bout number two. Randall Tex Cobb makes his debut in our universe, taking on Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick has been a, a tough fight for many a fighter, but in his last bout, Jerry Cooney annihilated him. Now let's quickly go to the rankings and let's go sort in alphabetical order so we can get to Bobbick quickly. Dwayne Bobbick won in four, but Cooney annihilated him in one round. Bobbick has actually been fairly tough. He upset Taylor Philo Stevenson, then lost to Michael Moore a close fight. 95-94, 95-94, 96-93. Lennox Lewis, he took Lewis into the into the sixth round and, and gave Lewis some uh, anxious moments. Lost a majority decision to Donovan Razor Ruddick. Was feeling good about himself, and then Jerry Cooney starched him and won. Randall Tex Cobb will make his debut in our universe. Randall Tex Cobb from Orange, Texas. Overall record in reality, 42-7-1 with 35 stoppages. Dwayne Bobbick, Little Falls, Minnesota. Overall record in reality, 48-4-0 with 42 stoppages. Bobbick will have the edge in power slightly. Endurance will go to Cobb. Cobb has a tremendous chin. You can see that 11 number. Uh, uh, Bobbick, well, he has a questionable chin. And Bobbick is a slow starter. So his control of six will actually be eight. And the higher the control number, the worse it is. Both fighters 
are pressure fighters, or physical fighters, excuse me. Because T, I believe, stands for tactician. Bobic has a sneak right hand and uh, good hooks. Is considered a pretty clean fighter. Cobb is considered a dirty fighter when it comes to fouling. And he likes to hook. He likes to get on the inside, use hooks, and land the uppercut. Here we go, bout number two. Randall Tex Cobb, Dwayne Bobbick. Ten rounds, heavyweights, from the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Cobb in the red corner, Bobbick in the blue corner. They get their instructions from referee Dave Gardner. There are no questions from the Chief Seconds. Fighters wait for the bell as they go back to their corners. And it's going to be Cobb looking to press the attack on the inside. Bobbick looking to use the jab and land the right cross. Bobbick a slow starter. Here's the bell, round number one. Cobb gets inside. Bobbick ties him up with octopus arms. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Both fighters throw and miss. Now it's Cobb in tight. Bangs away at the body. Bobbick using angles. He did absorb some body shots there. Cobb again punching away. 1-2 to the body, chopping right hand to the head of Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick establishes the jab. A jab and a right hand, left hook to the body. Good job by Bobbick. Bobbick looks to punch. Another right hand cross lands on the iron chin of Randall Tex Cobb. It was a nice feint that caught Cobb out of position. Both fighters circling. They're not throwing. 25 seconds to go. If you roll a 20, the fighter automatically gets the punch result. Bobbick digs a left hook to the body, chopping right hand, blocked by Randall Tex Cobb. Final seconds, round one. A good round for Dwayne Bobbick. They tie up. Referee Dave Gartner breaks them. There's the bell. I give that round to the man from Little Falls, Minnesota, former Olympian Dwayne Bobbick. The ringside scorer gives it to Dwayne Bobbick. Eddie Futch is in the corner for Randall Tex Cobb. Joe Frazier. Actually, Eddie Futch trained both of these fighters. I would think Eddie Futch would have went with Bobbick. So Eddie Futch is in Bobbick's corner. And we're, who are we going to give for uh, Gorman? Dave Gorman, who was out of Texas, a trainer. He'll be in Randall Tex Cobb's corner. Only in name, just for something to say. Round two. Scheduled for 10. Bobbick again looks to stay on the outside. Cobb wants to get in tight. Cobb gets inside. Bobbick ties up. Referee Gardner breaks him. Bobbick from distance feints the jab, lands a 1 2 to the body of Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick, good body shots there. Referee Gardner says they're on the belt line, they're clean. Cobb gets inside. Bobbick tries to tie him up. Cobb works his hands free. Left hook. Chopping right hand to the head of Dwayne Bobbick. Both fighters circle one another. Bobbick moving away from the pressing. Cobb. Bobbick behind the jab. Gets a good hook into the body. It was a right hook after jabbing. Stopping the advance of Randall Tex Cobb. Cobb works his way past the jab. Bangs the body with a left and a right. Then the left uppercut splits the guard of Dwayne Bobbick. Cobb trying to stay in a rhythm. Chopping right hand to the head of Bobbick. Follows it up with a left hook to the body. Bobbick starts to retreat. Cobb pressing. Cobb, beautiful left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Excellent round for Randall Tex Cobb. Heavy favorite here. He's from the... Lone Star State. The fan favorite is Randall Tex Cobb over the former Olympian Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick now looks to be in control here. He's going to come out and press. They're telling, they're telling Bobbick, we want you to get your pound of flesh. The bell. Bobbick races forward. Cobb meets him in the center of the ring. Cobb throws the punches. Cobb digs the body quite well. Bobbick looks to come back. Bobbick, left hook to the body, right hand to the head of Randall Tex Cobb. 
Blood. Blood from the nose of Tex Cobb. Good job by Dwayne Bobbick. Cobb fighting through the bloody nose. Left right to the body. Left uppercut. Grazing shots, but scoring shots landing on Dwayne Bobbick. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. They, this is phone booth warfare at ring center. Bobbick working the angles. He can't land. It's a grazing shot. Cobb looks to counter. Left uppercut. Right hand to the jaw of Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick. The blood is pouring. The blood is pouring. That is a huge cut over the right eye of Dwayne Bobbick. Cobb looking to end this fight. Bobbick looks to fire back. Bobbick with that sneak right hand on the inside catches Cobb. Bobbick again looks to throw. Left hook to the body. Right left to the jaw. And facial area of Cobb. And Cobb, more blood from the nose of Randall Tex Cobb. It is a bloody affair here in Texas. Bobbick continues to fire away. Ripping hooks left and right to the head of Randall Tex Cobb. That blood is horrific over the right eye of Dwayne Bobbick. Final seconds, and it's Bobbick punching away. Bobbick forcing Cobb back with a four-punch salvo. All the punches landed. Cobb eight, one, two, three, and four. It was a lead right, left uppercut, then a left hook, right hook, all to the head and jaw of Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick quickly to the stool, and they have to work on that very bad cut above his right eye. In the Cobb corner, they go to work on that bloody nose. 2-1, Dwayne Bobbick. But Bobbick is concerned, as well as his corner. That is a very bad cut. We move on to round four. Really good round for Bobbick, except for that cut. Now, Bobbick, they're telling him, get on the inside. You're a better infighter. That's what Eddie Futch and Joe Frazier are telling Bobbick. Dave Gorman in the Cobb corner. This is try to catch him coming in. Bobbick works his way in. Bobbick left right to the body. Cobbs keeps his arms in tight. But the left uppercut splits the guard of the man from Orange, Texas. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Randall Tex Cobb landed the right hand. Bobbick landed the left hook to the body. Cobb faints. Misses the jab, misses the right hand. Good defense. You can see a trickle of blood from that cut above Bobbick's eye. Cobb aiming for it. Beautiful job! Right hand, left hook to the jaw of Dwayne Bobbick. And Bobbick ties him up and shoves Cobb away. Blood starts to come out from that right eye. Above the right eye, excuse me. Cobb is targeting, targeting that blood. Two jabs in a right hand. Land on Bobbick. Bobbick looks to fire back on the inside. Lands two short hooks, left, right, to the body of Randall Tex Cobb. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both men aiming for the head. Both men land. 25 seconds to go here in round four. Bobbick loading up. Left hook to the body. Sneak right hand to the face of Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick continues as Cobb backs up. Bobbick bam! away with a double left hook at the bell. The first one into the ribs, a second one clipping the iron jaw of Randall Tex Cobb. Another good round for Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick came on strong. We prepare for round five. Again, in the Bobbick corner, they go to work on the cut above the right eye. Round five scheduled for ten. Cobb on the outside. Bobbick moving forward. Cobb Faints the jab, right hook, left hook to the jaw of Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick buckles. Cobb pushes him off balance. Bobbick goes back to the ropes. Cobb looks to load up. Right hand to the jaw of Bobbick, left hook into the ribs. Bobbick ties up Cobb as he presses the advantage on the ropes. Referee Gardner breaks them. Bobbick still on those ropes. Cobb measuring, bang with the right hand on the Bobbick jaw. Cobb again measuring. Left uppercut. Right uppercut. Bobbick is in trouble. Blood under the left eye now. Bobbick is a bloody mess. Bobbick trying to fight his way off the ropes. Bangs the body hard with both hands. Cobb comes right back. Cobb missed with the right hand to the head, but dug the left hook into the ribs of Bobbick. Bobbick is able to evade those shots. They were wild shots from Tex Cobb, but Bobbick's still on the ropes. Cobb lands 
below the belt. Referee Gardner admonishes him at the bell. Big round for Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick is a bloody mess. He is a bloody mess. And a very unconfident Dwayne Bobbick plops down on his stool. We prepare for round number six. I don't know how they can stop both those cuts, but they're trying feverishly in the Bobbick corner. Bobbick is breathing heavily. And I think not only fatigue has set in, but anxiety. Randall Tex Cobb looks to finish it here in round six. Both fighters faint. Cobb shoves Bobbick, who's pressing forward off balance. Bobbick moves forward. Bobbick is caught with a straight right hand and a left hook to the body. Good combination by Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick gets inside. Cobb tries to tie him up. Bobbick works his hands free. He ratatats the rib cage of Randall Tex Cobb. Bobbick extremely tired. Bobbick lands a little south of the border. Referee Gardner warns him. A minute 34 to go. It's Bobbick pressing. Bobbick faints. Left hook to the jaw. Right hand to the jaw of Randall Tex Cobb. Cobb buckles. Those were hard shots by the Olympian Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick looks to follow up. Bobbick lands a vicious right uppercut, snapping the head of Randall Tex Cobb. Cobb comes right back with a shot to the Franks and Beans, and that slows Bobbick down. Referee Gardner again admonishes Randall Tex Cobb, but Bobbick comes back, chopping right hand, left uppercut. The right hand was partially blocked, but the uppercut got through. Cobb Really not moving too much, trying to use the jab. Faints the jab and lands a left right to the body. They were both hooks. A good round for Dwayne Bobbick. But again, you can see the blood from above the right eye. And that cut is really hindering Bobbick. He also has the cut below the left eye. The right eye is the worst of the two. Blood from the nose of Cobb. We prepare for round number seven. Let's go to the ringside score. 58-56 in favor of a bloody tired former Olympian from Little Falls, Minnesota, Dwayne Bobbick. We have the fight close also. Both fighters off their stool. We wait for the bell for round seven. The bell, round seven. Now it's Cobb looking to pressure Bobbick. Bobbick looking to use the jab. Cobb gets inside, lands a couple of hooks to the body. Cobb again working that body quite hard. Bobbick starts to move back. Cobb! Overhand right, left hook on the job. Dwayne Bobbick. Bobbick buckles. Cobb shoves him back. Bobbick in the ropes. Cobb looks to end it here. Cobb missed with the right hand, but lands the left hook to the body. Bobbick ties up, back to the ropes, ties up Randall Tex Cobb, doesn't want to let go. Referee Dave Gardner pries them apart. About a minute to go here in round seven. Bobbick looks to fight off the ropes. Cobb moves forward. Bobbick catches him with a right, left, right. Cobb walks through those punches. Bobbick continues to fight off the ropes, lands the lead right. 34 seconds to go. Cobb, left uppercut, right hand. And that cut under, now, oh, wow. He is a bloody mess. Blood all over the face of Dwayne Bobbick. He has a cut under the left eye, over the left eye, over the right eye. Final seconds, a bloody Bobbick on the ropes. Cobb pounding away, pounding away. A couple of hooks got through, one to the head. It was a right hook, and then one to the body, a left hook. Big round for Randall Tex Cobb. How much more punishment can Dwayne Bobbick take? Round eight, scheduled for 10. Cobb looking to score a victory in his initial debut. Round eight. Bobbick behind the jab. Missed the jab and the right hand. The blood is really bothering him. It's already beginning to flow into the eyes of Dwayne Bobbick. Cobb faints. Boom! Left, right on the jaw of Bobbick. And Bobbick is down. A bloody Dwayne Bobbick is down. Cobb goes to the neutral corner. Referee Gardner picks up the count at six, seven, eight. Bobbick. A bloody Bobbick gets up. 
Referee Dave Gardner wipes the gloves of Bobbick, asks him if he wants to continue. He says yes. Cobb goes for the kill. Cobb banging away at Bobbick. Bobbick on the ropes. Cobb just rat a tatting Bobbick over and over again. Cobb punching away. Left uppercut, right hand. Oh, cut on the chin. He is a bloody mess. Bobbick is being destroyed on the ropes. Cobb wailing away. Bobbick is in serious trouble as Randall Tex Cobb is just windmilling punches over and over again. That is it. That is it. Referee Dave Garner jumps in to call a halt to the slaughter. Randall Tex Cobb is the winner via TKO in round eight. It was a close bout, but it was the iron chin of Randall Tex Cobb that eventually won the day. Also, the punches that made Dwayne Bobbick's face into mincemeat. A bloody Dwayne Bobbick was on his feet when the fight ended. SGJ Jamie at ringside was screaming for them to throw in the towel. Uh, Bobbick is a groggy, bloody mess. Randall Tex Cobb is victorious. The official time of the TKO in round eight. One minute and 59 seconds into round eight. Your winner, Randall Tex Cobb. And the fans enjoy that. Again, Randall Tex Cobb from Orange, Texas. Was a fan favorite. And even though some people thought Bobbick could use the jab in the right hand to victory, it was a close fight. We had it a close fight. Let's go to the ringside score. Before the stoppage, 67-66, Bobbick. Now let's check out the judges' scorecards. 69-64, Bobbick. 67-66, Cobb. And then 67-66, Bobbick. So Bobbick was in there. Bobbick was in there. But Randall Tex Cobb, as we like to say, his fists were judge, jury, and executioner. And Bobbick was executed via TKO at 159 of round 8 when Cobb hurt him, had him on the ropes, and just continued to pound away. He had knocked down Bobbick early in the round and finished him off at the 159 mark. So Randall Tex Cobb is victorious in his debut as well as Scrap Iron Johnson. Now, trying to make a comeback is Jack Johnson. Johnson fought Sonny Liston in his first bout in our universe, and Sonny Liston knocked him out in one round. So Jack Johnson has not fought since. Buddy Bear, brother of Max Bear, the former heavyweight champion, makes his debut. He comes in from uh, Denver, though I think originally from California. Let's go to the preview. So Jack Johnson was knocked out in his only fight. Sonny Liston starched the Galveston Giant in one round. Buddy Bear makes his debut here in Houston, Texas at the Sam Houston Coliseum. Jack Johnson's overall record for the former heavyweight champion of the world, 77, 13, and 14, 14 being the draws, 48 stoppages, 19 no contests. He is considered a clean fighter when it comes to foul tactics. Buddy Bear, well, he's not so clean. He's considered a very dirty fighter. 51-7, and seven, no draws, 47 stoppages. Buddy Bear can bang with either hand, preferably the right hand. Tremendous power by Buddy Bear. Endurance will favor Johnson. Johnson likes to fight elusive around the outside, try to pick apart his opponents, Though, he couldn't pick apart Sonny Liston, who again knocked him out in one round. Buddy Bear, he could fight outside, inside, or bring the pressure. Bear likes to land the right hand or the big hooks. Johnson likes to use the jab or pause with the jab. Looks to land the right cross or catch you with the uppercut. Coming in. Both fighters are in the ring. Bout number three of our five-card schedule. 
about to start. Jack Johnson out of the red corner. Buddy Bear out of the blue corner. Bear, they're telling Bear as he, uh, they're coming to ring center. Bear and Johnson, what a stare down between these two. No questions by either corner. Referee Dave Garner says, have a good fight. They touch gloves. They await the bell for round number one, scheduled for 10. Bear looks ready to swarm Jack Johnson. Johnson, you know, he'll like to be on the outside. Here's the bell, round number one. Johnson, right away, keeps Buddy Bear at bay, holding and hitting. Referee Gardner lets it go. Buddy Bear works his way in, misses his shots. Johnson looks to counter. Beautiful uppercuts there, holding Buddy Bear's head in place. Hit him with two right uppercuts. Nice job by the Galveston Giant. Bear loads up. Left to the body, right hook to the jaw of Jack Johnson. And Johnson is hurt. Johnson is hurt. Shades of his fight with Sonny Liston. Buddy Bear looks to starch Jack Johnson. Bear pounding away. Johnson on the ropes. Johnson looks to fight off the ropes. Two jabs by Jack Johnson. Bear measuring. Bear lands a left right to the body, still measuring with the jab. Both fighters throw and miss. Johnson still on the ropes. Johnson faints. Bear moves forward. Johnson catches him with a hook to the body. 15 seconds to go. Buddy Bear. Big shots to the body. He unloads a four-punch salvo. All cleanly ripping the rib cage of Jack Johnson. Huge round for the brother of Max, Buddy Bear. Big round for Buddy Bear. Jack Johnson goes back to his corner, and he has to be thinking about that fight with Sonny Liston when he got knocked out in one round. This time he makes it through round number one. Round two, scheduled for ten. Control factor favors Jack Johnson. And again, Johnson holding and hitting. Referee Gardner lets him get away with it. Johnson circles. Bear tries to get in tight. Johnson feints the jab and lands a right hand. Bear looks to come back. Bear... Wildly wings at the body, lands a grazing shot. Johnson counters with a short one-two combination to the jaw of Buddy Bear. Bear pressing Johnson, hooks to the body left and right, trying to slow down the Galveston Giant. Bear holds Johnson in place, bangs away with the right uppercut. Referee Gardner breaks them. Bear again gets inside but cannot land his punches. Johnson smothers him and works the angles, moves away. Bear looking to load up. Bear misses the left, misses the right. Johnson smiles at him, but there are no punches. Now Johnson looks to punch. Faints the jab, lands the right hand. Johnson final seconds, throwing. Again he faints the jab, catches him. Bear with a right uppercut, left hook, right hook. And there's the bell. Nice round. By Jack Johnson. He was not very busy, but he had the more showy combinations. I kind of give it's a close round. I give that round to Jack Johnson. Round one, definitely Buddy Bear. We prepare for round number three. Again, my scorecard and the ringside scorecard, unofficial. In the Buddy Bear corner, they want Buddy to press the attack. Get on that inside. Johnson, well, Johnson will do what Johnson will do. He wants to stay on the outside and counter. Bear looks to get inside. He cannot. Johnson counters beautifully. Again, he feints that jab and he lands the right hand. Johnson, jab in the right hand, left hook. Good job by Jack Johnson. Bear forcing his way inside. Bangs a left to the body, holds Johnson in place and rips a right uppercut that snaps the head of the Galveston Giant. Buddy Bear works that body and works it hard, trying to slow down Johnson. Not that Johnson moves quickly, but he has nice, smooth movement. Oh, Buddy Bear! Left hook to the body, right hook to the body, and another hard left hook, nearly catching uh, the, the liver area of Jack Johnson. You can see Johnson wince in pain. Bear looking to take advantage as Johnson backs to the ropes. Bear loads up on the right hand. Johnson slips away from it and slides away from the ropes. Bear looking to throw again. Missed the right hand, but lands a grazing left uppercut. Buddy Bear opening up. Right hand misses. Left hook to the body doesn't. The right hand was to the head of Johnson. Johnson evaded that, but again did not evade the left hook. Johnson. Johnson. Holding Bear in place. Ripping the right uppercut. Not once, not twice, but three times. 
into the jaw of Buddy Bear at the bell. We are through three rounds. Johnson rallied at the end, but I don't think he stole the round. We have it 3-1. I'm sorry, 2-1 Buddy Bear. Let's go to the ringside score. Ringside score has it 2-0-1 for Buddy Bear, gave, giving round two even. So a good job here by Buddy Bear. He's been able to impose his will on Jack Johnson. He had Johnson badly hurt in round one. Johnson, unlike the Liston fight, was able to stand up to it, though. Here we go, round number four, and it's Buddy Bear again pressing inside. But Johnson's defense is excellent. He parries away the bear punches and slides away. Buddy Bear moves in. Johnson meets him. Johnson, beautiful job. Again, he holds Bear in place, and he rips those right uppercuts into the jaw and face of Buddy Bear. Bear, toe-to-toe -to -toe warfare. Bear chopping right hand, left hook to the body of Jack Johnson. Bear continues to outmuscle Johnson on the inside, ratatatting his ribs. The head shots did not land, but the rib shots did. Toe to toe exchange, even exchange. About a minute to go here in round number four. Johnson works the angles on the inside as he works the body of Buddy Bear. Another toe to toe exchange, even exchange. Good action round here. Fans liking it. 36 seconds to go in round four. Johnson works the angles beautifully. Right uppercut, left uppercut, right uppercut, snapping the head of Buddy Bear. Bear looks to fire back. Right, left, right, hooks to the jaw of Jack Johnson. And there is the bell. So Buddy Bear came right back after absorbing tremendous uppercut shots by the Galveston giant Jack Johnson. And we give that round to Buddy Bear. He rallied quite well at the end. Coming up on the midway point of this scheduled 10 round bout, round five. Johnson having a lot of trouble with Buddy Bear. Here's the bell for round five. Johnson will try to counter Bear from distance. Bear works his way in, and Bear, one two to the body, and a left uppercut snapping the head of Jack Johnson. Johnson lands a right cross, but missed with the left hook. Johnson continues to counter. Johnson left right to the body. Johnson punching now. Johnson puts a jab on Bear and then comes with a straight right. Johnson really in a rhythm now. Johnson, lead right to the jaw of Buddy Bear. Left hook to the Labanza. Bear looks to retaliate. Bear bangs the body. Johnson slides away. Bear tries to chap. Johnson missed the left hook. Land a grazing right hand as Johnson moved away from the ropes on the top of Johnson's head. Bear faints. Johnson fires! Oh, a good counter shot there by Jack Johnson. Final seconds of round five. It's Buddy Bear landing a powerful cross. Missed with the left hook, but the cross landed at the bell. And that would have been a knockdown had it not been for the defensive roll of Jack Johnson. That hundred roll is a money roll when it comes to power, usually. But Johnson rolled with the punch, but he did get clipped quite well. And I, another close round, I give that to Buddy Bear. But Bear starting to show signs of fatigue. Ringside score has it 50-47 in favor of Buddy Bear. Gave round five even. Johnson in the corner. They want Johnson... To stay away, stay away, and pick Buddy Bear as he pick Buddy Bear apart as he moves forward. Johnson goes elusive. Bear tries to get on the inside. Bear is able to cut off the ring. A frantic exchange by both pugilists and the toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. And once again, Buddy Bear works his way inside. Johnson stands his ground and just continues to rip those uppercuts as he holds Bear in place. Referee Gardner gives a slight word to Jack Johnson, but has not taken a point. Buddy Bear is frustrated. He windmills punches, shoving Johnson back into the ropes. He lands to the body and the head. Johnson moves away from the ropes. Bear pursues. Bear again gets in tight, and he starts to work the uppercut into the jaw of Jack Johnson. Johnson back towards ring center. Johnson throws, misses. Bear, beautiful left-right hook. 
counter on the jaw of Jack Johnson. About a minute to go here in round six. Buddy Bear is fighting a tremendous fight. Continues to follow up. Digs a left hook to the bottom. And again, there's that hundred roll. It would have been a knockdown, but it's a solid right cross after the left hook into the body that lands on Jack Johnson. Bear looks to follow up. Bear smothers Johnson on the ropes. Putting uppercuts through the guard of Jack Johnson. Snapping his head. Johnson looks to fight off the ropes. Two jabs, a right hand. Johnson slides back to ring center. Johnson, Bear pursues. A rat-a-tat, four-punch combination. Left, right, and then two uppercuts. A left uppercut and a right uppercut at the bell. Jack Johnson, beautiful combination. Catching Buddy Bear coming forward. But again, we give that round to Buddy Bear. Is Johnson stealing these rounds? Uh, not in our eyes. Round seven is upon us. Buddy Bear. Again, looks the worst for wear when it comes to conditioning. He's landed some good right hands on the jaw of Jack Johnson. But Johnson, with those defensive rolls, is able to roll with those punches. Round seven, scheduled for ten. Johnson on the outside. Johnson... Faints the jab, lands the right hand, missed with the left hook. Johnson again faints the jab, lands the right hand. Both fighters faint but don't move. Uh, don't fire, excuse me. And his buddy Bear pressing forward. He is a very large pugilist. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange from the Galveston Giant and Buddy Bear. Nice one-two by Jack Johnson, snapping the head of Bear. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange again. This is a good Jack Johnson round. He's able to keep Bear at distance. Side-to-side -side movement, circling, fainting, and he's catching a tiring Bear more and more now. As I say that, Bear loads up and makes the charge. He windmills two punches into the body, two punches in the head, and pushes Jack Johnson off balance. Johnson goes into the ropes, and Bear again rat attacks the rib cage and comes up to the head. He threw about a six-punch salvo. Four of them got through. Bear has Johnson on the ropes. Bear with a jab, missed with the right hand at the bell. Good, good comeback by Buddy Bear. He had Johnson on the ropes, pounding away. Another round in our eyes for the brother of Max Bear, former heavyweight champion, Buddy Bear. Buddy Bear fought Joe Lewis twice for the title and lost. Once was a DQ, once was a knockout. We have Bear ahead in this fight. We have Buddy Bear ahead, and Jack Johnson could be going 0-2. Buddy Bear looks very exhausted. He's exerted a tremendous amount of energy in this bout. Can Johnson rally in rounds 8, 9, and 10? The ringside score has Buddy Bear up by 3, 69-66. We have Buddy Bear up by a little bit more. Again, our scorecard's unofficial. Round 8. From uh, the inside, both fighters meet at ring center. And it's Jack Johnson, 1-2 to the body. Left uppercut, right uppercut, snapping the head of Buddy Bear. Bear absorbs it. Johnson continues. He feels he's the stronger fighter again. 1-2 to the body, left, right uppercut to the jaw of Buddy Bear. Over and over again. It is a very effective combination for Jack Johnson on the inside. Clash of heads. And Buddy Bear has some major swelling near that right eye. And that's going to hinder him. Johnson looking to take advantage on the inside. There's that combination again. One, two to the body. Left uppercut, right uppercut. Tremendous round here for Jack Johnson. Johnson loads up. He misses. Buddy Bear comes back with two uppercuts as he holds Johnson in place, ripping the right uppercut through the guard of the Galveston Giant. Just over a minute to go here in round eight. Johnson on the inside, working the hooks to the body, working the angles. Bear tries the punch. Chopping shots landed by Buddy Bear. Under 30 seconds to go in round eight. Bear, big combination, right hand, left hook, right hand of the jaw of Jack Johnson. Johnson is hurt. Johnson is hurt. Final seconds. Bear looks to load up, but he cannot land the necessary blows to drop Jack Johnson. He did land a couple of grazing shots, and those big shots, the second time he has hurt Jack Johnson, we give that round to Buddy Bear. A tired bear is still a dangerous Buddy Bear. 
Six more minutes to go. Jack Johnson could be going 0-2 in our universe, and that will pretty much cement him to bye-bye. Round 9, scheduled for 10. Johnson has a tremendous advantage over the tiring Bear when it comes to control, but it's Bear who's punching away. Left, right to the body, ring center, phone booth warfare. Then the left uppercut, followed by the right uppercut. Buddy Bear giving it back to Jack Johnson. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, equal exchange. And it's Buddy Bear out muscling Johnson on the inside. Right hand to the jaw, left hook to the body. Buddy Bear with an excellent start. In round nine, Johnson looks to come back. Johnson opens up with a furious six-punch combination. Bear backs a bit. Johnson follows up. Right hand, left hook. Johnson continues to follow up. Bear backing up. Johnson pressing. Bear dangerously close to the ropes. Jack Johnson opening up. Tremendous shots. Bear on the ropes, absorbing it over and over again. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, and it's Buddy Bear who got the better of that. Johnson backs up for a moment. Final seconds in a hellacious round nine. Bear loads up, lands the left to the body, but missed the left hook coming up to the head. Excellent round for Jack Johnson. But as I say that, Buddy Bear rallied at the end. We give that round to Johnson. We think Johnson needs at least a knockdown to possibly be in this fight. He definitely... In our eyes, I actually think it's a knockout. We'll go to the ringside score. 89-86 in favor of Buddy Bear. We have Bear by two more points. We did not give even rounds here. Oh, boy. And Buddy Bear wants to knock out Jack Johnson. His corner is begging him to stay on the outside, but Bear wants to knock him out. Johnson's going to go right at Buddy Bear. They touch gloves, and the violence proceeds. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, furious exchange. Fans on their feet here. Johnson looks to load up with a left, right, knee land. Johnson punching hard. Johnson right hand, left uppercut. Bear absorbing all this punishment. Bear backs up. Johnson left hook, right hook to the jaw of Buddy Bear. Bear on the ropes, looking to fight off the ropes. Lands a right hand to the jaw of Johnson. Then the left uppercut, it was grazing. Johnson... Trying to keep Bear on the ropes. Bear ties him up. Referee Gardner says fight out of it. They break. Under a minute to go. Johnson needs a knockout. Again, Buddy Bear ties up Johnson. Bear back to the ropes. Johnson looking to load up. Right hand, left uppercut. Final moments of this bout. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, and there's the bell. Johnson did all he could to try to knock out Buddy Bear. Bear was tired and on the ropes. But Bear survives. We give this decision unofficially to Buddy Bear. Captain Carl 8 at ringside says, I think I see Buddy's older brother, Max, in the front row. You are correct. He is cheering on his brother, Buddy. Again, we see this bout, and this is an upset. We see Buddy Bear taking this fight, and... <laughs> Jack Johnson going 0-2, and, and we can kiss him goodbye from our universe for a while. Ringside score has Buddy Bear 98-96. We have Bear by more than two points. The commission has collected the ringside judges' scorecards for the final time. They're going over the scorecards, and this is taking a bit too long. Is there some shenanigans, as ID Gesture would say, going on here? at the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Remember, Jack Johnson is the Galveston Giant from Galveston, Texas. Anxious moments here. Now the ring announcer has the official result. We have a unanimous decision. 97-96, 98-95, 99-94. For your winner, Buddy Bear! Buddy Bear has done it. He has come into Houston and upset the former heavyweight champion Jack Johnson. And Buddy Bear is on to bigger and better things, Jack Johnson. Well, you're going to have to wait. Johnson 0-2. First fight, he gets starched in one round by Liston. And now Buddy Bear imposes his will. Johnson, he came on like gangbusters in round 10, but could not take the big Buddy Bear off his feet the way Joe Lewis did in reality. So a big win in his debut, Buddy Bear, a unanimous decision.
a big upset of Jack Johnson. 97-96, We prepare for our fourth bout. George Foreman taking on the Puerto Rican Ozzy Acasio. Foreman has been on. Foreman started off tough. He fought a lot of tough fighters, failed in his chance at the world title. Let's quickly look. Ozzy Acasio is making his debut. Let's look at George Foreman's overall record so we will go to the rankings and i like to put it in alphabetical order because it's easier to find george foreman here's big george foreman six two and one with five stoppages foreman really hammered the bejesus out of jack dempsey knocking him down on many occasions i, I don't know how, how many he knocked him down one, two, three times in that fight. He dropped him twice in the first. And then again in the second, he just blew away. And then Dempsey came on towards the end, but it was a huge win for Big George Foreman. He got a title shot against Gene Tunney. He fought him to a draw. But then Tunney took him into the deep waters a second time. And that was a 12-round fight. That was an accident. I believe that was a 12-round fight. Where do I see? Yes, 12 rounds. We forgot to make that 15. When we made it a 15-round fight, Tunney TKO'd him in 11. Then Rocky Marciano stopped George Foreman to claim the vacant, I think it was the vacant USBA title, or Marciano was champ. I think it was a vacant USBA title. So two losses in a row. Then we gave some soft fights for Foreman. He knocks out Ed Tutal Jones, Danny Woodford, Lou Bailey, Lorenzo Zanone, though Zanone took him into the eighth, and then uh, still in Italy, he knocked out the other Italian, Francesco Damiani. Now he's back in Texas. Ozzy Ocasio, this should be a win for George Foreman. Steelerfan 1933 says the Sam Houston Coliseum was the home of Houston wrestling, which I loved as a kid. Someone else said that too earlier on. Or it could have been in the Facebook group page, maybe. All right. Here we go, bout number four. Our fifth and final bout. You wouldn't think would be the main event, but I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. Roy Harris versus Cleveland Williams, both pugilists from Texas. All right, let's preview the Foreman Acasio bout. George Foreman, six. Two and one with five stoppages. He's been stopped twice himself in our universe. Ozzy Acasio makes his debut. Acasio is from Puerto Rico. Overall record for Ozzy Acasio, who was a cruiserweight champion of the world, I do believe, and failed to win the heavyweight title against Larry Holmes. He went from heavyweight down to cruiserweight. Um, then I think down to light heavyweight. I think. And then back up to cruiserweight and heavyweight. 23, 13, and 1 with 12 stoppages. After the first round, his chin goes down, which is not a good thing. And he likes to fight elusive around the outside, does not like to fight on the inside. And uh, hooks and crosses are his favorite punches. George Foreman, overall record in reality 76, 5 0 with 68 KOs. Foreman bangs. He can bang with either hand. Tremendous power. Acasio will actually have an edge in endurance. So somehow if Acasio can survive for a bit and not take a tremendous amount of punishment, he might make things interesting. Both pugilists are in the ring for bout number four in our five bout heavyweight card here at the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Foreman out of the red corner, Acasio out of the blue corner. Foreman's going to go right at Ozzy Acasio. They quickly have their final instructions back to their corners. Here's the bell for round number one. Foreman charging out at Acasio. Acasio circling. No, Acasio's on his bicycle. Foreman looks to cut off Acasio. 
And Foreman bangs away with hooks at the elusive body of Ozzy Ocasio. Foreman loads up. Right hook to the body. Left hook to the jaw of Ozzy Ocasio. Ocasio is hurt. Foreman looks to make it a short night. Foreman pawing jab. Big right hand on the face of Ozzy Ocasio. Ocasio double time on his bicycle. Foreman cuts off the ring. Left hook to the body. Right hand to the jaw of Ocasio. Ocasio's in trouble. Ocasio's in trouble. Gets off the ropes, looks to fire. A jab and a right hand catches Big George. And George is cut under the right eye. George is cut under the right eye. Foreman pressing. Acasio looking to tag the right eye again, but it's Foreman who bangs away at the elusive Acasio. Grazing punches, but they scored. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as Acasio gets the hell off the ropes. Final seconds, Foreman loads up, and Foreman lands a big uppercut and a left hook. Somehow, Acasio stood up to those blows. Foreman does have a cut under the right eye, though. And that might give Acasio confidence. And that confidence could get Ozzy Acasio knocked out. They work the cut quite quickly in the Foreman corner. Foreman is enraged. Round two scheduled for ten. It'll be a miracle if Acasio survives three. Foreman loads up, bangs hard hooks to the body. You can see Acasio wince. Acasio looking to stand his ground a little more and peck away at that bloody eye under, underneath the uh, right eye of Foreman. And there's Ozzy Acasio. Missed the jab but landed the right cross. Foreman comes back with body shots, but Acasio doing a nice job of feinting and firing. Foreman bangs the body hard. Foreman looking to slow down the elusive Acasio. Acasio puts two jabs in Foreman's face, and blood trickles underneath the right eye of Foreman. Foreman very angry. Foreman digs two hard shots to the body. Oh, hellacious hooks on each side of Ozzy Acasio's rib cage. Acasio looks to come back. A nice little combination, not much on those punches, but it was a three-punch combination, catching Big George, moving forward. Acasio fighting quite well. Foreman, jab right hand, clipping Acasio. Foreman bangs the body as Acasio was trapped on the ropes. Foreman takes that round, but Acasio survives and moves on to round three. That cut under the Foreman eye has just gotten slightly worse. D. Scott Howard has joined us at ringside. How you doing? Hope all is well with the Goat Whisperer. Round three, scheduled for ten. Foreman races out towards Acasio. Acasio on his horse. Foreman corners and bangs away at the body. Acasio slides away from the ropes. Foreman continues to punch. Foreman, jab, right uppercut. Acasio grabs on and moves away. Foreman bangs the body with a left and a right hook. Foreman, right hand, left hook, right hand. Acasio on the ropes. Foreman looking to load up. Foreman pawing with the jab, lands a right hook to the body. Acasio looks to fight off the ropes. Right cross lands by Ozzy Acasio. Foreman undeterred. Foreman bangs a left, right, left into the ribs of Ozzy Acasio. Tremendous body shots by Big George Foreman. Foreman wings a left hook and a right hook. Acasio dips away and now slides off the ropes. Foreman, booyah, right hand, left hook on the jaw of Ozzy Acasio. Acasio buckles, and there's the bell. Holy cow. Ozzy Acasio was on his way out. The only thing that saved him was the ding-ding of the bell. As George Foreman tried to ring Ozzy Acasio's bell over and over again. Foreman glares at Ozzy Acasio sitting on his stool. Acasio, he's a brave man coming out for round four. It's Foreman looking to take Acasio's head off. Missed with the right hand to the head, but lands a good left hook to the body. Acasio not moving as much. And Foreman lands to the belt line. Foreman loading up with each and every shot. Right hand, left hook, right hand. Acasio somehow ties up Foreman. Now moves away. Foreman puts a jab on Acasio. Acasio looks to counter. Beautiful uppercuts by Ozzy Acasio. Foreman was over anxious. He got caught with a left and a right uppercut. Acasio back behind the jab. Foreman out jabs Acasio and lands the right hand. Foreman 
Looking to load up. Acasio with two quick jabs. Stops the Foreman advance. Foreman again moves forward. And Ozzy Acasio hits him with a 1-2. Good jab and a right hand by Acasio. Acasio following up. A left hook to the body. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. And Acasio got the better of it. Foreman was very much wild and wooly in that round. And he got tagged quite a bit. We give that round to the heavy underdog from Puerto Rico, Ozzy Acasio. Holy cow. Let's go to the ringside score through four rounds. Dead even. Wow. We have it 3-1 Foreman. The ringside score has it 2-2. Two, two. This has been a highly entertaining bout. This would be a huge upset. The bell for round five. Foreman rages forward, left jab and a right hand, nails Acasio. Acasio trying to jab with Foreman, and he does a beautiful two jabs and a right hand, snapping the head of big George Foreman. Foreman has some major swelling near the right eye. Acasio is boxing beautifully. Foreman bangs the body and bangs it hard, but Acasio stays at distance. Foreman missed with the right hand, but the left uppercut gets through the guard of the Puerto Rican, snapping his head. Foreman looks to follow up as Acasio's on the ropes. Foreman left right to the body, left right to the head. Hard shots. Acasio's hurt on the ropes. Foreman goes for the kill. Foreman. Left hook to the body. Right uppercut snapping the head of Ozzy Acasio. Still on the ropes. Foreman pounding the jab and now pounds the right hand into the ribs of Ozzy Acasio. Foreman looking to take out Acasio. Foreman just windmilling punches to the body and up to the head. All hard shots. Acasio is being battered on those ropes. Referee Dave Gardner looking on. More shots by Foreman. And somehow Acasio gets through the round. Referee Dave Gardner is really giving Ozzy Acasio every opportunity as Foreman just used the man from Puerto Rico as a human punching bag. But Foreman is breathing quite heavily in his corner. He is huffing and puffing. Can Ozzy Acasio rally here? Foreman has a lot of swelling uh, around the right eye and a cut underneath the right eye. As World's Worst Gamer says, this fight is brought to you by the George Foreman Grill Company. Yes, this match is bought and paid for. Acasio ain't winning. Well, Acasio has fought quite well. Round six, scheduled for ten. People didn't think it was going to go this long. And Foreman wings shots and misses. No counter by Acasio. Foreman again now lands two jabs. Both fighters from distance. Foreman landing that jab over and over again. There's another two jabs by Big George Foreman. Acasio looks to come back. He's targeting that right eye. And Acasio puts two jabs on that right eye and a straight right hand. The swelling gets worse for Big George. Acasio, unbelievable! Faints the jab and lands the right hook to the body of Foreman. Foreman is exhausted. Foreman, left hook, right hook, left hook. And Acasio is hurt. Even a tired, exhausted Foreman still throws hard. Acasio goes into the ropes. Foreman, right hand, left hook. Acasio is in trouble. Foreman. Can't get in punching range. Acasio doubles up on the jab and slides away from the ropes. Acasio's legs don't seem to be there. Final seconds. And there's the bell. Acasio really on uh, legs that don't seem sturdy. Goes back to his corner. He might have stole that round, but I don't think so. Foreman landed the heavy thudding shots that sent Acasio into the ropes and almost out of the ring. But Acasio has somehow made it into round seven. Acasio's chin. I thought it was supposed to go minus chin. Minus three after the... Oh, after the first knockdown. Now, I said I thought it was the first round. First knockdown. Okay. His chin has held up so far. Ringside scorer. 57-56 Foreman. We see it pretty much the same. Round seven scheduled for ten. Acasio lands towards the belt line. That's going to even slow down George Foreman even more. Both fighters faint, fire, and miss. 
Uh, now they circle one another. Casio pawing the jab, and now quick with the jab. Two jabs, snapping the head of Foreman. Foreman very tired, still dangerous. Foreman missed the right hand, but land the left hook to the body. Acasio moves away. Two jabs and a right hand snap the head of George Foreman. Acasio continues to punch. A left to the body, missed with the right hand to the head. Foreman looks to retaliate. Foreman, right hand, left hook to the jaw of Ozzy Acasio. Final seconds here in round seven. Another good round for Acasio. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Foreman got the worst of that exchange. Unbelievable. Ozzy Acasio takes round seven in our eyes. We have it dead even. Because I think we had an even round somewhere in there. Or actually, either that or Acasio's up by one. Ringside score has it 66-66. Could we see a huge upset here? Unbelievable. Acasio said he watched the fight films of the two bouts that Foreman had with Gene Tunney, and he is doing some of the same things that Tunney is, was able to do to Foreman, but not to as the same success as Tunney, but he's being quite successful. Round 8, scheduled for 10. Foreman, Acasio, both behind their jab. Foreman jabs to the head and bangs the left right to the body. Foreman very visibly tired. Acasio comes back and bangs the body. Acasio staying inside a little too much, now slides away. Acasio is warned for holding and hitting. Foreman comes right back to the belt line. Foreman measuring. Booyah with the right cross. They tie up. Foreman very exhausted. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. 42 seconds to go here in round eight. It's Acasio. Two more jabs, snapping the head of a tiring George Foreman. Acasio faints. Acasio lands the right hand, left hook to the body, and brings it quickly to the head. There's the bell as both fighters fired right hands and failed to land. Another round for Ozzy Acasio. This is unfreaking believable. Foreman in his corner, exhausted. Acasio, they're telling him through the, the Puerto Rican interpreter, the Spanish interpreter, you can win this, Ozzy. Believe in yourself. We have six more minutes to go. This would be a huge upset, and this would drop Foreman right down the rankings. Ringside score gave that round even. I gave it to Acasio. Round 9 scheduled for 10. And it's Acasio quickly behind the jab. Two jabs and then the left hook to the body. Foreman looks to fire back. Foreman right hook, left hook on the jaw of Acasio. Acasio was hurt again. A tired Foreman lumbers forward. Missed the left hook but land a grazing right hand. Acasio seems still stunned. Foreman tries to bang the body. But Acasio moves away. One body shot did get through. Acasio, left, right, left to the jaw of Foreman. Acasio tagging Foreman as Foreman moves forward. Not a lot of oomph on those punches, but he is hitting Foreman over and over again. Both fighters throw and miss. Final seconds coming in round nine. Foreman, a jab and a right hand on Acasio. Acasio felt that. Acasio moving away. Foreman pursues. Foreman, left hook to the body, quickly brings it to the head. Right uppercut, and Acasio grabs on to Foreman at the bell. Foreman takes round nine. We have three more minutes. This is an upset in itself if Ozzy Acasio can go the distance. Acasio has been hurt on several occasions, but he has stood up. He has not touched the canvas, which is huge because if he goes down, his chin goes from a seven to a three ringside score has it 86 85 foreman we have it extremely close too unbelievable they come out to ring center both fighters tired but foreman definitely the worst for the wear when it comes to fatigue they touch gloves final three minutes they tie up. Referee Gardner breaks him. Acasio with a four-punch salvo. Left, right to the jaw. Left, right to the body of George Foreman. Foreman looks to come back. Foreman hooks with a right and a left hook to the body into the ribs of Ozzy Acasio. Foreman, a jab and a right hand. Acasio goes back to the ropes. Acasio looks in trouble. Foreman, another jab and a right hand. 
Acasio looks to fight off the ropes. He hooks to the body. Still lingering on the ropes. Foreman moves forward, and Acasio catches him with a left hook and a right cross. Acasio on not good legs, slides away from the ropes, but he's going to stand his ground toe-to-toe -to -toe with Foreman. Foreman bangs the body. Could have went low there. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Foreman backs up. Acasio backs up. Now they go right at each other. They tie up, and there's the bell. Holy cow. Ozzy Acasio goes 10 rounds with big George Foreman. Who would have thunk it? And he might eke out a decision or a draw. We give him round 10, even though he was hurt on the ropes. Wow, they give it to... They have it even. This is a scary fight here for Foreman. And this would be a huge upset. And this will... If Foreman somehow loses this bout, which he could, I mean, it could go either way. He's going to drop way down in the rankings. And Ozzy Acasio is going to be right up there. Maybe he gets a shot at Muhammad Ali and the North American Boxing Federation title, or Jerry Cooney and the USBA title. Cooney and Joe Baskey fought to a draw for the USBA title. Cooney maintained the title because he was champion. Wow. And we thought they were taking a long time with the scorecards in the prior bout. They're taking even longer here. Are there some shenanigans going on? They're just checking the scoring. Now it's finally turned over by the commission to the ring announcer. We go to the official result. 96-95 Foreman. 95-95 even. 96-94 George Foreman. Big George Foreman escapes with a victory here at the Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas by the hair of his chinny chin chin. He wins by majority decision. A disappointed Ozzy Acasio not in agreement. Neither are his corner with that decision. Again, 96-95 Foreman, 95-95 even, 96-94 Foreman. I think it's a fair decision. That bout could have went either way, and I think the punching power of George Foreman was the difference. Foreman has a badly swollen uh, around the right eye and that cut underneath the right eye. Acasio really had a nice game plan they put together following what Gene Tunney did twice to Foreman. He just did not have enough oomph on his punches. Is there a rematch in the near future? Like when Foreman had a, a, a controversial decision early in his career against Giorgio Peralta of Argentina, then they fought a rematch. Foreman fought much better in the rematch. Let's look at the fight report really quick. Acasio took round 10, all three judges. Foreman, all three judges, round 9. Round 8? Even all three judges. Acasio, seven. Acasio, two out of three judges in round six, one even. Foreman, all three judges in round five. Acasio, all three judges in round four. Foreman, all three judges in round three. Acasio, two out of three judges in round two. Foreman, all three judges in round one. Foreman, again, when he won his rounds, he won them bigger. He had 79 punch points compared to Acasio's 40 punch points. Acasio had a lot of good control rolls that kept him in the fight. Wow. Unbelievable fight card. So far, George Johnson, Scrap Iron Johnson, won a majority decision over Ed Tutal Jones. Randall Tex Cobb stopped Dwayne Bobbick in round eight. So that's 1-1 one, one for the Texas folks. Buddy Bear upsets Jack Johnson by unanimous decision. Texas fighters one and two. But George Foreman wins a very close and some might say controversial decision over Ozzy Acasio, the pugilist from Puerto Rico. It was a majority decision. So it's 2-2 two, two for Texas fighters. Well, the main event, they're both Texas fighters. And I think it's going to be a fun bout. Both fighters make their debut in our universe. Roy Harris, who lost to Floyd Patterson for the heavyweight title, and also lost to Sonny Liston, I do believe. Not in a non-title fight. It was after Liston lost the title, I think. I don't think it was before. It could have been before. Maybe it was before. Against Cleveland Williams, who lost to Muhammad Ali in his one title crack. 
Roy Harris from Cut and Shoot, Texas. Cleveland Big Cat Williams, Houston, Texas. He will be the fan favorite, though Roy Harris will have his fans here at the Houston Coliseum, in the Sam Houston Coliseum. Roy Harris, overall record, 35-5-0 with nine knockouts. He does not punch very hard. He is a tactical fighter. His endurance, slightly better than Big Cat Williams, who's a big, big puncher. Harris likes to fight on the outside. He likes to throw the jab of the right hand and the uppercut when his opponent gets into range. Cleveland Williams, good jab, big right hand. He had two wars with Sonny Liston. Liston knocked him out both times. Again, non-title fights. Both pugilists are in the ring. Bout number five coming up. Our final bout from Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. It's been a fun fight card. Better than the crap I watched on The Zone. I assume that Garcia, Ryan Garcia won. I'll check that out later. Both pugilists in the ring. Harris out of the red corner. Cleveland Big Cat Williams out of the blue corner. And without any further ado, they get their final instructions. They go to their corners. We await the bell for round number one. Harris will be trying to work the jab from distance. Here's the bell. Both fighters from distance. Harris lands two jabs in a right hand. Good start for Roy Harris. Harris continues to stick and move. Beautiful combination. Keeping Big Cat Williams off balance. Striking him with a jab, then the right cross. They faint but don't fire. Both fighters throw right hands and miss. Big Cat Williams missed the jab but landed the right hand. Grazing shot as Harris moving, moving, moving. Now they tie up. Williams gets into punching range. Harris ties him up. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Under a minute to go here in round one. Big Cat Williams left hook to the body. Right hand on the jaw of Roy Harris who has a suspect chin. And Harris is badly hurt. Big Cat Williams... Wings a left and a right. Missing. Harris gets away from those ropes. Harris goes back to the jab and lands a good crisp right hand at the bell. Oh, wow. That is a tough round to score. Uh, I like the big punching of Big Cat Williams, but other than that, Harris was more effective. We're going to give a slight edge to Harris in that round. Again, our scorecard and the ringside score unofficial. Harris, for some odd reason, will want to fight on the inside. His corner says, back up, Big Cat. They don't think the Big Cat can fight backing up. Big Cat welcomes that. It's going to be toe-to-toe, -to -toe, ring center, and it's Harris banging the body and then up to the head. Nice four-punch combination. Big Cat Williams comes back with a chopping right hand left uppercut. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. Fans liking it. Harris standing his ground. Harris, four punches. Backs up Williams, snapping his head. Williams looks to come right back. Williams lands a left hook and a big right hand. Buckling the knees of Roy Harris. Second time Harris has been hurt in this bout. Williams throws wildly. Can't land the kill shot. Harris still trying to clear his head. Williams works his hands free. Left hook in the ribs of Harris, then a chopping right hand by Big Cat Williams. They're still toe-to-toe, -to -toe, ring center. Uppercuts landing on the inside by the Big Cat. Williams just pounding away. Harris backing up, and there's the bell. A huge, huge combination there by Cleveland Big Cat Williams. It was the lead right, left uppercut, then a left hook, and a right hand backing Roy Harris to the ropes at the bell. Two rounds in the books. And Harris, they're telling Harris now to get back on your bicycle. Establish that jab. Let's go to the ringside score. First round even. We gave the first round to Harris slightly. And again, we both give the second round to Cleveland Big Cat Williams. Tremendous puncher. Round three scheduled for ten. Both fighters faint, fire, and miss. Both fighters from distance. Big Cat 
Faints a jab, right hand, left hook, and Harris is down. Harris is down. Williams goes to the neutral corner. Referee Gardner picks up the count at five, six, seven, eight. Harris struggling. He just barely beats the count. Referee Dave Gardner looks into his eyes, wipes off his gloves, and he's going to let this go. Here we go. Big Cat Williams looks to finish him off. Harris moving. Williams cannot land the kill shot. Oh, big shots now. Huge combination driving. Roy Harris into the ropes. Harris looks to fight off the ropes. He hooks to the body. Harris, one, two, three, snapping the head of Big Cat Williams. Still on those ropes. Williams bangs the body. Both fighters throw and miss. Harris, the legs aren't there. He's lingering on those ropes. Williams bangs the body. There's the bell. So Roy Harris goes down. He gets up and he barely survives round three. Williams goes back to his corner. They're telling him it's just a matter of time, Big Cat. Pounce on him. He's the mouse. In the Harris corner, they want him to stick and move. Round four, scheduled for ten. And it's Harris putting the jab, two jabs, a third jab, now a right hand, into the face of Cleveland Big Cat Williams. Williams measuring. Now they tie up on the inside. Williams got in punching range, and Harris does not have his legs all there yet. They tied up. Harris, again two nice jabs by Roy Harris. Williams faints the jab, lands the right hook to the body. Both fighters circling. A minute 18 to go in round four. Jab right hand, lands for Cleveland Williams. The right hand was grazing. Harris trying to get his legs back here. Cleveland Williams, right hand, left uppercut, and Harris is down for a second time. Williams to the neutral corner. I don't think Harris is going to beat this one. Six, seven, eight, and somehow he struggles to his feet. Referee Dave Gardner wipes off his gloves, looks into his eyes yet again, says, do you want to go? He says, yes. Williams goes for the kill. Williams battering away, battering away, relentless, banging, banging, banging. Harris on the ropes, and Harris is down again. A second time, Harris struggling to try to grab the ropes and pull himself up. Seven, eight, nine, and he just beats the count again. One more knockdown. I believe this fight will be stopped. Referee Gardner, will he let it go? It looks like he's going to let it go. Seconds left here in round four. And there's the bell as Cleveland Williams was rat-a-tatting. Harris on the ropes. Referee Dave Gardner had a leap in there. Some fans thought the bout was over, but it was just the end of round number four. Will Harris come out for round five? He looks horrible in his corner. Here's round five. The bell. And it's Cleveland Williams. Jab right hand on the jaw. Harris buckles. Tries to grab onto Williams in ring center. Williams pushes him away. Williams, one, two, grazing shots. Harris looks to fire back with a jab, and he does. Harris again lands an uppercut on the inside, a left uppercut, now a right uppercut. Harris sidesteps Williams. Williams hooks to the body. Now both fighters at distance. Harris blinking his eyes. That hook really hurt. A jab and a right hand catches Harris. Blood from the nose of Roy Harris. Harris backs towards the ropes. Williams moves forward and gets caught with a 1-2. And now a right uppercut by Harris. Good job. Cleveland Williams, a jab and a right hand. Swelling near the right eye of Harris. Referee Gardner looking on Harris. He's giving Roy Harris every opportunity, but he's in big trouble on the ropes. Cleveland Williams opens up with... Fists of Fury and the bell. Oh, my Lord. Roy Harris somehow, I don't know if it's a good thing, but he survives another round. And again, fans thought the fight was over as referee Dave Garner went leaping in, but it was the end of round number five. Harris 
is in all kinds of a world of hurt. The referee is going in to check Harris. And they're going to let it continue. Harris and his corner has convinced referee Dave Gardner to let the fight continue. He got that 20. Had it been 13, it had to be higher than a 12. No, I'm sorry. Had to be lower than a 12, I believe. He got the 20 roll. Let's just look at the ringside score. Williams way up with the knockdowns in rounds three and four. In fact, Harris went down twice in round four. It is just a matter of time. Harris has nothing that can stop Cleveland Williams. I don't know. Convincing referee Dave Gardner to let the bout continue is the best thing for the health of Roy Harris. We will find out. Here's the bell for round six. Cleveland Williams. Jab right hand. Harris goes right back into the ropes. Williams measuring. Williams, right hand, left hook, right hand. Harris in all kinds of trouble. Harris moves away from the ropes. Williams pursues. Williams jab but misses the right hand. Again, Harris trying to get away from Williams. Williams stalking his prey like the big cat he is. Harris faints. Williams moves forward. And he catches Williams with a right cross, left hook. Under a minute to go. Harris punching away. A jab and a right hand catches Williams. Williams looks to fire back. Right hand, left hook, right uppercut. Harris. They're still going to let this poke go. Harris fighting off the ropes with a right hook and a left hook to the body. Holy cow. This is a very entertaining bout, a competitive mismatch. Harris is really hanging in there. Round seven. Cleveland Williams doesn't know what he has to do to knock out Roy Harris. They're calling this the unofficial heavyweight championship of Texas. Round seven. The slaughter continues, but as I say that, Roy Harris pumps two jabs into the face of Cleveland Williams and lands a straight right cross. Harris continues to punch, jabbing his way in close and ripping a right uppercut through the guard of Cleveland Williams. Harris stays on the inside, bangs the body, and two more uppercuts get through. Williams backs up a bit. Now both fighters at distance. They tie up. Harris is warned for holding and hitting. Both fighters circle. Cleveland Williams is also a bit fatigued. They continue to circle. Williams faints. Harris moves forward. Williams missed the right hand, but landed a grazing left. Both fighters throw rights and miss. Final seconds here in round seven. And Harris... Bangs the left to the body, and then a chopping right hand to the head of Big Cat Williams as Big Cat Williams moved forward. Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt says, I've read a bit about Big Cat's life and death after boxing. Tragic stuff. Yes, it was. We go to round eight. Wow. Cleveland Williams thinking the fight was going to be over. He's huffing and puffing. Can Roy Harris have a miracle here? That's actually the first round Harris has gotten on either of our scorecards. Well, I think I gave round one to Harris. Ringside score gave it even. Round eight, nine, ten coming up. The bell for round eight. They clash heads as Big Cat Williams rushed out towards Roy Harris. They look okay. Big Cat Williams applying the pressure. Harris backing dangerously close to the ropes. Jab right hand hit Roy Harris. And there is blood from the mouth of Roy Harris. Harris ties up Big Cat Williams. Referee Gardner breaks them. Again, Harris ties up Williams. Referee Gardner breaks them, warns the fighters. They come to watch you fight, not wrestle. Harris faints. Williams moves forward. Harris catches him, catches him with a grazing right uppercut. They circle one another. Big Cat Williams is applying, applying pressure, but not effectively. And as I say that, he gets in tight, holds Harris with his left, and bangs away with the right hook to the head. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. A good exchange. Both fighters tired, but firing. Harris with another good combination. It was a rat atta attack. Not much on it, but they were scoring blows. We move on to round nine. In the Harris corner, they're telling... Roy, 
He is dead tired. If you can clip him with something, he might go down. Big Cat Williams, who looked like he was going to stop Roy Harris. Back in rounds four, uh, three and four, is exhausted. And it's Harris who's digging deep. Round nine, the bell. Harris jabbing a right hand lands on Big Cat Williams. Williams looks to come back. Williams works the body of Harris with both hands. Williams continues to work the body. Williams punching away. Williams works the body overtime. Williams in a rhythm. Williams really hurting that body of Roy Harris. Harris backs up. You can see him wincing in pain. Williams now goes up to the head. He fainted to the body with the right and came up with a left hook that caught Harris towards the top of the head. Williams with a jab and a right hand. Harris is not answering back. Williams bangs back to the body with both hands. Williams forcing Harris back to the ropes, and there is the bell. A good combination by Williams. You can see some of the starch has come out of his punches, though. And somehow Roy Harris has made it to round 10. It will be a moral victory if Harris is on his feet. Both pugilists are exhausted. They're telling Harris in his corner, try to catch Williams coming in. Williams wants the knockout. This is both fighters' debut bouts in our Legends of Boxing universe. A touch gloves, final three minutes of the bout. Big Cat Williams, right hand, left hook on the jaw of Harris. Harris in trouble. Harris not moving. Big Cat Williams lands another right to the jaw and a left hook to the body. Jab, missed with the right hand. It's all Big Cat Williams. Hard shots, hard shots, and that is it. That is it. Referee Dave Gardner finally stops the bout. Big Cat Williams, tired or not, he was just windmilling shots, right hands, left hooks, uppercuts, everything he could throw. A defenseless Harris was trying to smother the shots. And as they stopped the bout, Harris went down to a knee. The winner by TKO in round 10, Cleveland Big Cat Williams. It was a struggle for the Big Cat, though. The official time, 1 minute and 13 seconds into round number 10. Roy Harris, well... He gave a good account of himself. He took a hell of a beating, but he gave a good account of himself. So Cleveland Williams is successful in his debut. Roy Harris is not. That was a very fun fight card from the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Well, let's just look at the fight report at the time of the stoppage. And they were not as cl They had Cleveland Williams. Obviously, we had Williams up anyway, big. 89-80, 88-80, 88-80. Cleveland Williams, 86 punch points. Again, that's not punches landed. It's points on punches. And uh, Roy Williams, 41. So that was a fun fight card. Williams is victorious. And I guess a stoppage is impressive, but it shows the limitation that Cleveland Big Cat Williams has. So quickly, let's go through it one last time. As World's Worst Gamer says, Harris took a beating all right. Wow. Scrap Iron Johnson beat the uh, former Dallas Cowboy, Ed Tutal Jones, majority decision. We had Johnson winning easy. Some judge had it 96-96. I don't know how, but at least the right person won. Randall Tex Cobb TKO'd Bobbick in the eighth, and that bout was fairly close. One judge, Bobbick. One judge, Cobb. Actually, two judges, um, Bobbick. One judge, Cobb, at the time of the stoppage in round eight. So that was a good competitive fight. Buddy Bear upsets Jack Johnson. Johnson now 0-2. And now he just drops out, and we're not going to use him for a while. George Foreman struggled to win a majority decision against Ozzy Ocasio. We might, we might do a rematch there. I don't know. And Cleveland Williams in a, a competitive mismatch and a hell of a beating Roy Harris took, as World's Worst Gamer said, and is correct. Stops Roy Harris 1 minute and 13 seconds into round 10 via TKO. So I like to think we had fun with this fight card. Again, better than the crap I watched on The Zone. Horrible fight card from San Antonio. 
I like to thank World's Worst Gamer, Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt, D. Scott Howard, Captain Carl 8, SGJ Jamie. It was a lot of fun. David Selinski was here. And Dave Gardner, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the stream, smack that like button. If you haven't subscribed and you want to, please do so. And hit the bell for notification when we go live. Become a member of the FOC. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the community members. And have fun with us. Till next time, stay safe. Treat people the way you want to be treated. God bless. I greatly appreciate your time. I'm going to hit the hay because I have to get up in a bit to go to church for Palm Sunday.